Hello and welcome to Console Shock episode 20, Retro and Modern Gaming Chat. Uh, we're back with another episode, uh, barely a week after the a week. last one. A whole week, yeah. And, and thank you very much, Trevor, for letting me back on the podcast after I was banished last week. After you're in the doghouse. The girlfriend put you in the doghouse for doing that internet thing that you keep going on about. Exactly, yeah. on the interwebs. You're like, I've got to go on interwebs. I've got to go on the interwebs for a bit. See you. You disappear into your man cave, close the door, go on the go on our podcast. That's just what it is, isn't it? That's how it works. Yeah, that's it. But I, I've managed to... Screw things I've, over. T- I've tied her up in the bedroom so I can do this, guys. Enough of that, Stuart, right? We don't want to know about what you guys get up to. <laughs> That'll be another podcast, video probably probably video based. Anyway, uh, so another episode a week after our last one, we had Ollie on last week. I think it, it, it was it, it was just me and Ollie. But I think Stu, did you actually listen to it? Um, I've not listened to it yet. Oh, nice! It's um, <laughs> they've done a new series of the Serial Podcast that's just come out, and that's that's cracking stuff. I but I will, I will listen to it though tomorrow morning on my way to work. It will be listened Great. to. I like it when people that are on the podcast listen to the podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, so it was great. Sorry, <laughs> so it was great uh, hearing from Oliver Harper again uh, last week. Hopefully he'll pop back on in a few more weeks, I think. Uh, Stu will hopefully be around for that as well. Should be. We do have another guest this week, though, and it's one of the big guns. I mean, uh, I did say that Oliver Harper was the PewDiePie of, of uh, movie reviews. We've now got the kind of English PewDiePie of just YouTube, I think. And it's Larry Bundy. Larry, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you for paying me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's quite all right, mate. Don't worry about it. It wasn't no, the fee was massive. This guy charges yeah. a lot. Yes, yeah, 12p. I mean, <laughs> that's about what we get on our Patreon, I think, isn't it? We <laughs> used the whole thing up, bless you. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. So, yeah, um, Larry Bundy, thank you so much for coming on. Um, oh. So It's great that we've got you here. We're going to sort of fire a few questions. Oh. And you had Oliver you. on last week. Yeah, I think, I think uh, you've, you've done some stuff, haven't you, together, I think, yeah. Pod- yeah. podcast-wise. Yes. <laughs> last week you had Oliver Harper on the podcast. Indeed. I know, yeah. <laughs> I hit it fairly well. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, um, so I think yeah, I think you've 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 done little joint podcasty stuff, haven't you, with with Oliver and, and Ashens as well, I believe. Uh, yes, yes, uh, we we've done a couple of reviews with Oliver and that, and I've done more well, loads of stuff with Stuart over the years. So, you guys, yeah, yes. So. so this is we're only using you to get to him, you know that, right? Oh yeah, well, yeah, that's what everybody does. I'm like the Mike <laughs> so, Matei. I'm like Mike Matei now. Everybody <laughs> just wants to be friends with me so they can get to him. So. The Mike Matei of Ashens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's that Ashens is ruined now because the retro hour guys got to him. So oh, we just we just look like we're going to be co- copying them if we just you know. Oh, don't worry. Well, they've never asked me to be on, so you got that going. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it'd be all over you. Oh, never. <laughs> we we actually had them those guys on actually Dan and Ravi, lovely guys. Um, really good, really nice guys. Yeah, well, they're really cool. So they'll probably be pestering you. Um, I think they're a bit more successful than we are because uh, we've had a few knockbacks. But b- bloody, oh. bloody uh, uh, te- tech mode, he turned me down. Oh, bless him! Oh. I said, I don't want to be on your podcast. Yeah, that's <laughs> telling that exact voice in text form. <laughs> I don't know how that would come across in text form, but yes, <laughs> he actually recorded a line and emailed it. This. Yeah, oh. I'm just saying this in a funny voice. So he he sent you an audio that. file. Mm. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, no, if he was, if he would do that, he would do it in some kind of obscure format. He was reviewing, yeah, that's right, sort of a track or something. He sent you a Betamax, a Betamax, yeah, to really, to really il- illustrate uh, an yeah, audio only Betamax. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you know what? I'm gonna pester him again. We'll, we'll get him on. We're yeah. a bit more legit now. I've had Larry. We've got you on now, Larry. Oh, so. that's good. We'll see if you can find any naked photos of him. Maybe you can blackmail him to come on. <laughs> well, it worked with you. I've already. Yeah, looked. I know. Well, <laughs> <I've already looked>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So funny enough, we're we're talking about uh, having. Well, we had Oliver Harper on last last time, uh, and we actually chatted about Sky in the nineties. The old. Oh, yes. The old. Analog Sky, and how it was actually sort of watchable in those days. Oh, yeah. It was, a, it was a very small subset of channels that were kind of spoilt now. And we talked about Games World, and now 
you you have been on Games World. Well, I was on Series Four. It's really a it was a shadow of its former self by then, but I was on it. If that counts. Yeah. Okay. Oh hell yeah, that's better, that's better than than us. Oh okay. You know, well, did you try and apply? Did you? No. Oh, there you but, go. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Watched it, which is like sort of mentally kind of a, a, a oh. applying, I guess, in, indirectly. Well, we wanted to, right? Stu, you wanted to be on that, didn't you? Well, I, n- I never had Sky. Um, so I always watched Games Master. And I remember once I went to a big game show in London, and it was the year when Dexter Fletcher was doing uh, Games Master. And I saw him do a live episode with some kids at it. And that's the only thing wow. that I've had a sort of linked to sort of the worst possible incarnation of games master live. yeah that that's right so i saw it live with dexter that's fletcher like didn't know anything saw, about games i saw a live filming of star trek 5 the final frontier that's like you know it's sort of like the worst possible example <laughs> i'd be impressed by that actually i like that film but uh so what did so you did you meet De- dexter fletcher no 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 I, I was just in the audience just watching you know Little Johnny play, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be the or something. Two slide game, wasn't it? They love that. The Terminator Two Amiga sub, uh, the, the game, the sub game in it. The, oh, the I, can't, I can't remember the games that are on it, but oh. well, it's normally all Sonic Two. Everybody <laughs> yeah, <always laughs> Sonic Two and and he- Heimdall. Oh, oh yeah. he was chucking chucking the axe at the woman with the pigtails. It was that. It was like four games, pretty much. That was it for, th- for four years. <laughs> <laughs> What else did they have on, on there? Cash they? Dash. Which what, was, what was that? It was uh, it basically oh. like um, uh, a chaos engine. Basically, it's the oh, same yeah. engine as a chaos engine. You just run around punching people and collecting coins before the time run out. Use the chaos engine engine. Yeah. What well, if that's what they called the engine for that? The chaos engine engine. Probably did. No, Unity. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like top name, yeah. isn't it, for a... Thing that make game run, yeah. <laughs> game engine. Yeah. Um, so, what was it like being on? Di- you applied for it, then I, I'll take I it. did. You did. And you got audition to go on it as well. You don't just say come on the show. You got audition, so you got to go down there beforehand and sort of pr- ask, a, answer a couple of questions, and sort of play some games. You don't have to give someone a blowjob or anything. It was just literally like a, no. It's a, basically a, like an old see those like audition old, videos. <laughs> oh, no, it's nothing like that. Well, you actually do have to Good. do a little recording bit, if I recall. Hello, my name is so and so. I like playing games and that. And basically, you play, stuff up, yeah. Yeah, and you sit in a room yeah. in an old, you know, they hire out an old church hall somewhere and load of kids in it and that. And they sort of interview you, play a couple of games together. All oh, right, so I guess you just have to look like uh, good at the good at games generally, then, or something. Is that what that what they were looking for? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you can't. Be, <clears throat> I think they, they make sure that you're not too good at games because you'd be a bit boring on the show otherwise. But I think, <laughs> I think it's a, a certain level of competence you need to be. I think they were playing the original FIFA and Turtles tournament fighters that they were testing people on. Oh, right. Well, I guess like they don't want to, if someone's too good, you could end up showing up the videators and they probably don't really want to keep that mystique around them, didn't, didn't they? they? I don't the think they're that. I don't think they're that bothered about them losing and that. It's just uh, sort of more entertaining more than anything. Was what? it the SNES t- tournament fighters or the, it was. One, the Mega Drive one? Oh, the Super Nintendo one, yeah. Yeah, that was a good, really good game. Yeah, oh, on Tekken 3 they had there as well. Oh, right. So, so you just sort of had the gold nose and then they were like, yeah, was it, and there was like there was there dozens of kids there that you line out, lining up for this? Or there wasn't that much when I went. I I went to previous series auditions and that, and they were absolutely like queuing out the wall and that. Um, oh, really? Yeah, a library in Islington was one of the audition places. <laughs> And uh, another library in Islington, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> Church and library motif. On yeah. So. <laughs> Sky with the millions that they're throwing at uh, to auditions for this. Let's yeah, get a library, mate. That's yeah, all we that's need. A library, yeah. And they, was, <laughs> and they went around ask, I was asking generic questions. Or oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And everybody yeah. said, I want to design games. I want to be the video games. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, want to, I want to have my head cut off and be like Patrick Moore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he didn't literally have his head cut off. So no. That'd be amazing if he was like sort of disembodied, like Futurama or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what? So that you sort of, you turn up to this thing, and then they just you went home, and then they got back to you, I guess. Yeah, a couple of weeks you, later, yeah. if you're successful or not, really. Uh, I was unsuccessful the first two times, but the third time, lucky, really. What, what did that feel like when you found out then uh, that you that you you've been chosen? 
<laughs> a combination of in uh, euphoria and about bloody time. <laughs> <laughs> Righteous indignation. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's that's amazing. I would have loved to have been on there. So. I think I think on on you you posted the the the, the episodes didn't you? Because it's over a week. Yes, yes, it? I've like done it's that. on every day. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I think that yeah, it was in that period when it had that bizarre alien kidnapping intro, and it was had an Aztec theme. That's it. Yeah. So completely unrelated. Everybody thought it was still using the set from the Crystal Maze at some point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there was like these sort of attractive women, and there was that bizarre thing where a dog would would get like the next challenge or out. <laughs> Who who came up with this stuff? Well, the dog was, was dog wasn't there. They just filmed it once and then just used that same oh, really? clip over and over again. And she just <laughs> so. bloody dog. You can't. Your dogs are so lazy when it comes to acting. Oh yeah. Why don't you turn up for I'm one prof- one's filming, mate? I'm not going to get there every day. All right. I'm professional. <laughs> so uh, it was shown. I think it was in shown in the mornings. Yes. The stage, the clock, seven o'clock in the morning as well. So. Yeah, because it was get the old video recorder out. So, yeah, exactly. Because yeah, um, we mentioned it last week, but um, it was sort of Star Trek: The Next Generation at five, and then you'd have I think Games World. At, uh, was it no? It was before? Was it before? It was like no, that's the earlier series you're talking about there. Yeah, the Bob yeah. Mills. Uh, no, I think I think. Day. Yeah, I think it was that. Yeah, about six o'clock. I think that was on. Yeah, and for half an hour, wasn't it? And The Simpsons was on at mm. seven. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you were filming it? Was it like uh, a couple of months beforehand? I guess. And... Uh, I recorded it at the end of April, and they put it in June or July, I believe. Did they do the whole five of the weeks worth in just one sort of sitting? Uh, in one day, yes. They done three episodes in the morning, and then one, and then two in the afternoon. Oh, and also, man. they also filmed everybody getting thrown in the pit before everything else, in case one of them right. stormed off in a huff or something and refused to do it. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they got the pit throwing out of the way, yeah, just to avoid any rebellions against that. Yeah, so there's a clip of me out there <laughs> somewhere in 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 the world of me being pushed into the pit. So. Oh my god, if someone got that, that would be like yeah. you know the memes would be like through the roof. It's quite good because I was really pissing about that day as well. I thought it's a shame nobody ever got to see it. Yeah, because I came across in the video, you kind of try to be a bit funny and a bit, you know, uh, uh, come across a bit more like personality wise. The other guy's yeah. just like, yeah, I like playing video games and stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't and, like the attitude of, I'm the best. I am the best gamer here. Yeah. Nobody could defeat me. And they get beaten the shit out by some kid who just uses yeah. leg sweeps in Mortal Kombat or something. <laughs> so. Using the same technique as the seat against the CPU, then, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it probably does work, actually, against you. the videators, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> But they were like like legitimately kind of decent gamers, weren't they? Those guys, they weren't just like uh, or just them con- controlling the game, and then they would cut to a video shot of someone else playing the game to make it, you know. Sort of... Oh yeah, well there are certain levels of thing. I mean, they had that Letty Edwards the game playing Granny, and that was just like somebody's mum said, "Oh, my mum likes playing <laughs> Tetris. I will get her on the show. She'll be a video." <laughs> <laughs> what just... was it like uh, meeting Dave Perry on there? He was actually a really nice bloke. Yeah, he was a really nice guy in real life. So, I mean, I've I've met him. Uh, I done used, used to do loads of artwork for him for his old website as well. So, we, so I got on with him. He's always a nice guy to me. So I've never had any problems with him. He's that's... a tattoo artist now, isn't he? He is, yes. And his uh, daughter's starting it now as well. She's even. because oh. I had. Um... He doesn't play games. <laughs> I'm a tattoo <laughs> artist, not <also> a marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Did that's I like tell you about Mario debacle? Isn't it become a tattoo ar- artist? Oh, oh, yeah. Failed at the penguin slide on Mario. Become a tattoo artist. <laughs> Do you reckon he's got the time tattooed on his arm? He probably has, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stu. You're, 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 I was, I was just going to say, my, my friend Malcolm, who, who we often talk about on the podcast, he um, bought a load of uh, Dave Perry memorabilia, I think including <laughs> a leather jacket. Action figure. And a, band, and a bandana when uh, Dave Perry was selling it all off. You're not the guy. He's not the guy who bought his golden joystick, as well, is he? I don't know. I don't know. He he told me I bought this. I bought that, and, uh, well, and he few... bought it off eBay, or like he met him and bought it. Or no, he found out he was selling. Like you know, he was moving house. He had all these boxes of his old gear that he used to wear on Games Master and all of this. So he got in contact, and you know, and he bought. I think he got the leather jacket, and I want to say a bandana. 
and he was a bit disappointed he didn't get something. He didn't get a gold joystick. That's what he wanted. Oh, okay. Well, he sold it to somebody else, mm. and uh, this guy bought it off him. I thought if because I, I thought this was Malcolm you're talking about. He he bought it off him, and he said he's going to give it like a new home and that to look after it and cherish. <laughs> and then he goes and sticks it on eBay. No, <laughs> that, Malcolm <laughs> won't do that. Oh, he made out. He made Dave out. Dave was gold. really pissed about that though. He, he made was, out the golden <laughs> joystick rescue home, and then he, <laughs> <laughs> he flipped it. Yeah, yeah, he was absolutely livid about that. Some guys, yeah, he sold loads of stuff to him. He sold like these limited edition Tekken games that only journalists got and stuff like that. And oh, wow. So really, really rare stuff. And then he goes and sticks it all on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he's also the guy who bought those. You remember those a couple of years ago? They kept posting up those really uh, sort of fake, uh, not fake, uh, rejected Amiibos. Like they got two extra arms and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're selling them along with that. What the hell? Mm. People go mental over those amiibos, don't mm. Well, they know. did. They're, they're like three quid now on Amazon, some of them. Yeah. You could see that a mile off, though, could, couldn't you? I say not the Zelda ones. People no. are coming in, and they're after those because you can use them in the game, and you get a horse and a and a sword and a, I don't know, all, all this extra stuff in the game and just having the amiibos. So just to clarify, Larry Stewart owns a shop. People just oh, okay. come up to his house. Oh, right, yeah, sorry, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah. Amiibos. laughs> so, Larry, if you're ever in Croydon and you want to spend some money on some retro games, come to me for all Play your... Nation Games. <laughs> Play Nation for all your retro gaming needs. And trading oh, cards. That out. Oh, that out, Stuart. Just, just around the corner from this cinema. <laughs> He's opposite the cinema. Oh, okay. There you go, yeah. There you go. Have you been there? Uh, no, I've been told about a couple of people have been there though. Uh, ah, perfect. So, yeah, so yeah, we've got a nice, good reputation about what the cinema or play nation games. Oh, I don't play <laughs> <laughs> cinema. Yeah, cinema's great. Love it. <laughs> well, you can buy the most popular games around, like Duck yes. Hunt. <laughs> we probably got that. Duck Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> many... the video games like Video Game One and Video yeah. Game Two, like. Sonic the Hedgehog. And All the FIFAs. Yeah. <laughs> Best <laughs> prices on FIFA not given. <laughs> we'll beat CEX on any FIFA trade in. We're Crazy Trevor's House of FIFAs. <laughs> <laughs> Buy two, get one Madden free. I have you know, I am fussy when it comes to my FIFA old school collecting. I only get like the retro ones up to up to ninety-eight. And actually, oh. maybe, actually, you know what? I, I went a bit mental and got 99 and 2000 on the PC. Oh, you rebel. That was one of my uh, <laughs> my low low points. Uh, <laughs> Did you ever see that video of uh, some kid in America? He got every single edition of Madden up until the latest one to trade it in. And it's still, okay. it still it wasn't enough money me. for the latest yeah. one, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, like Stu, obviously, we've talked about this before on the, on, on the show, but the amount of times I've been in, so when I used to live in Stratford, especially in <laughs> London, the CEX there would just be like, you know, like FIFA coming out the ass. there. Oh, yeah. And well, the I'd demographic work. of people that live in that area is basically they just play FIFA and Cobb. Chavs, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> but yeah, Chavs, yeah. Uh, uh, so you want to get into selling Burberry clothes as well, then make a fortune. <laughs> I think there is actually a shop. Oh. It's Westfield, isn't there, over, over the road. But yeah, what? and it would literally be, it'd always be the mum would go in and then have the kid, but the mum would get the kid to do the talking. They literally would stand there next to it, probably because, oh, I don't understand these video games. And it's like, you know, um, even though even though the mum would probably only be about 32. So, yeah. so they, when they were a kid, it was video games were well-established as like a, a mainstream. You well, know it's, it's a much cheaper than a babysitter, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. So it's like, this is like some kind of weird new new thing, new fangled thing. But then the kid would be there, and it's like, oh, well, they're really excited about their big pile of FIFA 07, 8, 9, 10. And then, and then the guy behind the counter is very jaded, been saying this for years, wouldn't give any real extra treatment because it's a little kid saying, yeah, that's 10p, mate. And it's like, oh, what I bought? I bought that for 20, you know, when it came out. And then I have to explain the economics of... Uh, is this well, CX still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that just a miserable-looking goth there, then? <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> so every time I go in, there's like some really miserable-looking goth behind the camera. Oh, oh that's, that's what Stu puts in his, when he wants staff. He just puts wanted. <laughs> miserable-looking <laughs> goth. <laughs> I the works there is like that. He's pretty happy. Because they don't move, you don't have to worry about <laughs> shoplifting. That's why. <laughs> It's hard to tell who works there these days because they just wear kind of like 
not that I'm saying they should wear some kind of like SS inspired Nazi uniform, mm-hmm. but um, they just wear kind of a, a, a kind of a, a regular clothes. The amount of times I've said people that look like they're sort of you know working there, I said, "Oh, do you work in there?" They're like, "No, mate." No, mate. I've, I've got, got too much right. dignity. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Smell bad enough. Having no dignity. They, they, oh. they do smell though. What they do? It the X's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweaty vinegar. <laughs> it's like fish vinegar, fish and chips and shit, and sweaty <laughs> vinegar. Okay, I'm using that as a handle from now on. Um, <laughs> that's a good one for like Tinder, I guess, or oh. something, isn't it? Maybe. Well, see, it used to be brilliant in the nineties because they're like this mass, like a, a chain of actual chain of import gaming stores. Yeah, and that was kind of what they were awesome. there for, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it was Computer Exchange, wasn't it? And it was yeah. like three in Central London. There was there was the uh, well, it's, it still exists, the Tottenham Court Road one. Hmm. Well, it's I weird. used to. Um, that, that I, used, I used to buy from them when they were just a stall at Wembley Market. Really? Yeah. Is that how they started? Yeah, they were a stall at Wembley Market. Wow. And then they were. Then they went to that. That top, I guess it was that top of yeah, road one that was the first. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they're still there. Yeah. So yeah, they're really good back then. Well, I've, I've been in that one. I've been in that one on top of the court road. I bought an in, a it's red. Quite small, isn't it? Yeah, it's really small, and, and there's a lot of sort of cages that have stuff behind it. So it's kind of like, yeah, what would you expect in middle of London? All those bloody <laughs> yeah, three fingers. It looks, like, it looks like where Vega fought in the street, like, <laughs> movie. like Asian pe- pe- people. I don't know what the yelling at? Well, I suppose like you know, got to get enough money for like, <laughs> seeing Spaniards <laughs> climb up the cages now to get on that <laughs> cop. Yeah, like, to get a game. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then diving down, like you know, only to be countered by a sort of mm. show where you can. But yeah, yeah, that that one's still there, and I think it was there was they opened like a couple more, didn't they, in the nineties? But yeah, then it was like yeah, well, amazing um, Wonderland I've type place. Been one in Harrow. There's one in Harrow I used to go to all the time. Yeah, I just remember going in once and had an entire wall full of um, Earthbounds. Oh, really? Brand, like, pristine, yeah, an entire rack full of them. It's like billions of pounds oh. now, pretty much. I know, I know. Money. I was kicking myself because I just went and bloody pirated it instead. <laughs> <laughs> you did the honourable thing. I did, yes. And pirated it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were <laughs> like, they were so expensive. Uh, I remember they had um, Mario Kart 64, like the day it came out in Japan, they wanted 170 quid for it. Oh my god! Really? Well, it did come with it did come with a joypad, but it's still not worth it. Let me quid though, and that was just was in the nineties as well. So it's like I mean now two hundred like, fifty, three hundred quid now. That is trouble with N sixty four. It's yeah, it's kind of creeping up now because the kids that were that were you know little kids that are now yeah. nostalgic for that, whereas we were kind of you know sort of maybe late teens, early twenties by the time that came out. Um, so we've either done our collecting for it already, or you know, or, or maybe we'll do it later on. But yeah, like Mar- like um. I've got a box copy of it, but Mario Kart. We will see. X are doing um, um, N64 now. Um, oh yeah, I saw that. Which yeah. is just endless copies of Torque and Goldeneye in this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Mike, Michael Owen's double WLS 2000, <laughs> sort of staple staple of every N64 collection. But yeah, um, um, yeah. I mean, they've got this weird scale of like uh, just loose. Um, and boxed and mint. Although the mint doesn't literally mean like you know perfectly cellophane, you know factory sealed or anything. It just means it's it's complete. You can sort of yeah, whack yeah. it oh, No, I don't like. I used to buy off their website once as well, and they really annoyed me once. Um, I I bought a copy of Snatcher off them. They had it for sale there, and uh, so recently. Uh, no, about ten years ago. Oh right, yeah. Um, <laughs> just when it's just starting to creep up in value. And I paid like That's 70 good. quid for it. And it come through the post. And all the spines were missing off it. It was like just the front cover. And well, you did really? it. Yeah. Oh, so they, yeah. they don't mind sending you stuff that has a complete crap beaten out of it. I mean, yeah. I bought, yeah, I like I bought um, a couple of those uh, charging units uh, for the Wii motion controller. And uh, one was uh, absolutely pristine and boxed. And the other one was completely like somebody had, had attacked it with a chainsaw or something. You get it's it's kind of a mixed bag, isn't it? Because you, the trouble is, if you if you Russian order roulette, one, yeah, yeah, mixed ball bag. But but uh, it's just <laughs> it's just CEX that do it. I mean, everybody else, even eBay, I've never had much problems with sort of damage and stuff like that. It depends on what you buy from them as well, because um, I I I buy a lot of now they're doing more retro stuff again. But well, you know, obviously they were put your Game Station before then it would have been, but now they've kind of got back into it. Um, I've, I've bought a lot of Master System and Mega Drive stuff, but but they they uh, they're more resilient. 
those boxes to the to the to, you know battering around and like a nez because they sell nez and everything now but you, that you you've got very little chance that that's going to be any anything like you know really good nick yeah um, but well, yeah, even, not, the, even the masters and books is always like got tea stains and that where it's soaked up in the label and that well, I'm, I'm 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 bloody for fussy as well it annoys me when you know when when like the inner sleeve for the cover is slightly out of the plastic so you get the frame. oh yeah and it gets a little doggy and stuff <laughs> yeah that annoys me which is so lame um oh. Triggered. Uh yeah. And um but I've got I've got I've got lucky a couple of times I got bought Outrun from them, the Mega Drive sort of version. Uh, oh, okay. uh and that, that came in really good nick. The manual was included, it was all really good good condition, the manual wasn't yeah. dog eared or anything. I was like I think I paid like twenty quid for it. And now I'm seeing it in I've seen a couple of CX the walk past that happened to have have that because uh, it's fairly common, but uh, I think the mystique of the of Outrun, the game, has kind of the price has gone up now. So that often you know thirty, forty quid. Mm. And Hyperstone Turtles, Hyperstone, that's like ninety quid now. Oh, bloody hell! I paid forty for it about ten years ago, and I thought that was a lot <laughs> because it's gone absolutely crazy. But yeah. Um, so what yeah. is the most you've ever paid for an actual retro game? I was going to ask you that actually, oh, okay. but, but, but I will. I, I will I'll jump oh, in. Okay. Because, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Whose podcast is this? <laughs> you can interview me if you want. Yeah, I've interviewed uh, you. Yeah. Come on, my bloody podcast interview me. What's yeah. the cheek of him? <laughs> oh God. Um, to be honest, I think I've gone more than 60, 70 quid, maybe. It, it, I, I don't, I, recently, I probably have to say recently, it might have been something like. Uh, I think Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2 on the SNES to get, even though again that's another one that's common as hell. But I just, I really wanted a copy of it. I think I paid about sixty quid for it off eBay for a really good copy, and it was really good. Definitely not a repro, oh, uh, and that's recently. If I really thought hard about it, I probably could find something that was closer to about a hundred pounds. Mm. Stu, your life, Stu. He's <laughs> falling asleep. <laughs> Hello? Have you dropped that? <laughs> Hello? I'm, I'm here. I've got a problem with my computer. I can hear you guys and you can hear me, but my screen <laughs> well, is fine. gone. I've got a problem with my computer. It's too boring twats droning on in here. I can't. <laughs> 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 this is a weird podcast. No, I know. Uh, it's for 60 pounds for Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Larry, I've just bought. Are you going to like Mortal Kombat again? No. No, shut up. <laughs> freaking Mortal Kombat. Right. Uh, Larry, I've just bought a new computer. And the screen oh, yeah. has all gone, you, you know, all I can see is my reflection on, on a black screen. And it's, and I, oh, it's gone into oh, God sleep mode, mode or something. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. Shaking the mouse or something. Or... Yeah, I've tried shaking the mouse. I've pressed the, I've pressed the Windows button and press everything. Oh, God. And I'm I mean, is it, are you sure it's not your monitor turned itself off? No, because the monitor's part of the thing. And if you turn the monitor off, you turn oh, the whole okay. computer off. Right, so, I'm going to rename this episode um, Troubleshooting Stu's Laptop with yeah, featuring Larry Bundy. <laughs> What's wrong with Stuart's computer? <laughs> turn it off and back on again. Yeah, yeah well, I'm, oh, I can't. Um, right, Stuart, focus. What, right, is, focus. What, what is the most you spent on a game? Me? Yes. Right. Who, who else? Mortal, Mortal <laughs> Kombat 3. <laughs> I bought Mortal Kombat 3 for three quid off this idiot or face. No. <laughs> uh, who was it? I want to of uh, Probably, I think I've got Dodon Patchy on the Sega Saturn. That cost quite a lot. How much? I can't remember. I want to say like or something. Um, But a lot of the games that I like to play aren't... Um, I don't like the, the RPGs and things like that. I, I wouldn't get those because it's just too long. And then, you know, there's lots of reading in them. It's not my type of game, really. <laughs> reading. There's text so, on the screen. And it's like, oh, there's God. text. And, do you know what? I, if, if, if I turn a game on and it says, how fast do you want the text to be? <laughs> you know, there's a problem. That, 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 that's, that says to me, don't play this game. It doesn't like you. So I will not touch it. <laughs> basically so i think it's probably yeah. that, that um i can't there's yeah, nothing else really larry you're gonna probably annihilate us oh i'm not that stupid i'm not that <laughs> stupid uh, <laughs> most, pounds. but no i'm not bloody <laughs> some, those bloody american dickheads who spend like 20 grand on bloody nes games and that. larry you're a youtube youtube celebrity 
Yeah. 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 Send you free games. People like the. I don't get that. I don't really get. Actually, uh, I did have a fan send me a completely sealed copy of Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Really? Yeah. Why? That was awesome. <laughs> He's he got my five lying around or something. I don't know. I don't know, but he just sent it. And I was, I thought, well, thank you. And it's, a, it's a, UK, a UK one as well, sealed UK one. I mean, that's got to be like 300 or quid, maybe, maybe more. Well, this, was, this was a couple of years ago, and they're going for like 70, 80 quid. Yeah. But, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, I, thought, I, I still want it. Hell. I wouldn't sell it. I think it's really. Talk, talking about Conker's Bad Fur Day, whenever we get one of those in the shop, we put it on. We put the price on Facebook. It's you know a loose one. We might charge eighty pounds, something like that. Then every time someone goes, "No, I've got that at boot fair for a fiver." Uh. So you totally lowball them if they do. You, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, like, yeah, but that's what you get with the comments, isn't it? On I know, I like see, arguments develop in the Jesus comments me. on something. You just put a picture of bloody, you know, whatever game you've got in, and it's like, oh, you know, I got that for minus eight p on eBay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I brutally stabbed someone to death and got it for free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I stole that from someone's house for <laughs> nothing. What are you Look at me, say? like cool. Acknowledged, you know what? What, what are you yeah. supposed to? Do? Yeah, well done, mate. Have a biscuit and a fuck off. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because you're, you know, I'm not just saying this because obviously, you know, we're mates of, and, and I like your shop, but you are genuinely. I've told you the legend of the winning eleven story where I bought all of your winning elevens because they were really cheap. Yeah. Something I've bought in your shop, Larry. They're in the £2. shop £2. for four years. For four £2. years, £2. all these games were here, and then Trev comes along and buys them all for ten pence each. Oh, same bloke was. Why did you do I, that? it has got a craving for it, man. Oh. I, was, <laughs> I, I really like Japanese f- f- football games, uh, and yeah, well, and it's like the one... Oh, I was, no, it's not <laughs> football. That's football, isn't it? They do like that though, don't they? And 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 the bus, uh, the bus sims. Yeah, like the bus simulators and train yeah. sims. Denture to go. Yeah. yeah. They get all the good stuff over there. Yeah. Well, all very... <laughs> That's what... All we get is first person shooters. All we get yeah. is yeah. And football so, games. How much you you haven't told us yet, Stu. What what is the most you've spent? I did, I told oh, you okay. Dodon Patchy. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Don't, listen, don't... listen, open your ears. Oh well, listening. Yeah. The whole the whole the screen going off thing it threw me for a little bit. Yeah, I zoned out. yeah that, that, that's oh. probably it. Um, Larry, I've got a question here from Malcolm. It, oh, okay. You're not asking me how much. What's the most I've spent yet? Oh we don't no, have people I, apart I, from Malcolm, by the way. <laughs> no. Seems to be both sides. Hold on. Let's leave Malcolm's question. It's a good yeah. one. You'll like this question from Malcolm. He's he's just called me. He's texted oh, okay. me. He sent me a fax. Oh, is that's not going to help him. That's not going to um, make it more enthusiastic for what, Larry. What is the most expensive <laughs> game you've bought, Larry? Uh, well, technically, uh, I bought the arcade motherboard of Simpsons. Uh, that was oh, under the, the scrolling kind of beat 'em up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. That's long before it all came out on like virtual console and stuff like that. It was 150 quid. And that's it not got, bad, actually. That's all right. right. That's good. Yeah. It was a bargain because uh, it's going for like three, four times that now. Did you have a cabinet then to pop that in? Or? I've got a Ninja Turtles cabinet to put it in. And it's yeah, there's Konami, of course, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, it's like, so you yeah. just plug it over, yeah. Uh, but the most expensive sort of console game, uh, I think it was a uh, Panzer Kickboxing on the GX four thousand because that goes like four hundred quid now, and I paid seventy. I remember the, the, Am- the Amstrad GX four thousand. Yeah. Oh wow! Did some you? The, some of the games go for silly money on that now. Really? Yeah. It was a piece of junk, and people haven't really sort of got well, any... Con- the console is, is literally a piece of junk. You need to turn yeah. it off properly, otherwise it cooks its own guts. So... <laughs> yeah, you do, you know, your body or videos, isn't it? Yeah. The ones that are sort of dying, the consoles that are dying. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to turn it off properly. If you pull the plug out from the machine instead of switching it off first, it will fry the motherboard. Bloody oh, a- Alan Sugar. Yeah. Him and his o- overheating console. So what- Explain to me what what is this this game? What what, what why is it worth? Well, the Amiga, isn't it as well? I think. Uh, yeah, it was called Best of the Best. Yeah, mm. it's that it's that kickboxing game where they use the, the, there's lights at the top of the screen <laughs> for your energy bar. Right. Okay. You, you okay. used to have on Games Master all the time as well. But yeah, it's a terrible game. But like I said, because nobody bought it, it's worth a load of money. So it's worth like seventy quid. Well, just, no, it's not. I pay seventy quid. It's worth like three, four hundred quid now because it's so oh, rare. Wow. But it was literally a CPC, wasn't it? Put a console eyes. Uh, it's a CPC 464 Plus yeah. console. And it can't obviously play any of the tapes, so it's just whatever limited. I mean, how many uh, retail... It can now if you use like a flash cut. If oh, you've got right, like, yeah, yeah. 
But yeah. there's no way of playing them because you ain't got a keyboard to press a certain button. So, so you have to. As long as it, so. <laughs> Stitch us right up there, didn't he? And uh, older sugar. Oh, yeah. Sugar, sugar tits. What he thought he could take on Sega and Nintendo with like five year old age Yeah. yeah. I mean, he didn't need to try, and you know, he, he, Sega were going to take care of themselves, and eventually, with the shit they came out, they came oh, out. Well, he, he was even worse later on. Do you remember yeah. those video phones he brought out in yeah. sort of the <laughs> flip down the screens and stuff? Yeah, on them. That, that'll, that'll never take off. <laughs> Alan Partridge had one. Yeah, well, he was. He had an idea that you could play retro games on that. He had his own virtual console, and you could download uh, Spectrum games and play them for seventy p a day. Oh my god! <laughs> yes. So if you got a lead or something, and you want to play that for like a year, yeah. Well, it's or a pound for a week. It was yeah. one pound, no one pound fifty for a week. It was or or some EP a day. And there's most of them are like old ocean games like Donkey Kong, which are Gilligan's yeah. Gold stuff like that. I mean, no, sorry, that's why he always goes around saying, "Oh yeah, I invented that stuff before, like Apple or or Nintendo or whatever, isn't he?" That's probably yeah. Where he gets that from. I'm, I'm the one who put it on the market, and I'm the one who made it rubbish. I put a rubbish version on the market. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter if it caught fire. I put it on first and for cheaper. <laughs> You're to laugh, ain't you? <laughs> so, uh, right, okay, you must be. Literally pissing yourself, uh, waiting to hear what this question is from. Oh Mount yes, okay. the build up. I'm gonna, read out, I'm gonna read out my whole text message uh, conversation from Trevor. This is oh, no from Malcolm. Oh, from Malcolm. Sorry. Okay. Hi, mate. <laughs> Hi, mate. This is Hello. me. Hello, me. Have Hi. you got a question for Larry Bunny? <laughs> <laughs> then I put Buddy. Then I put Bundy. <laughs> So it's we got the, the, I we got using the end. phone to text you. Did you use an asterisk to make it clear yeah. that you were correcting a spelling mistake? You can't just throw out the extra, you know, the, the correction there. Oh, yeah, proper well, grammar. He, he, he knew who I, I meant. Right. And he, but, ha ha, awesome, exclamation mark. Hmm. Do you think, here comes the question. Okay. Do you think your top 10 worst games influence the AVGN to do the Hong Kong 97 episode? Yeah. Uh, probably not. No, okay. I think if he forgot who I, I even existed until I spoke to him a couple of months ago, so more likely no. I'm going to say a better story. He said yes. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to go around accusing people of ripping people off. That's what Mike McTay does. <laughs> well, well, he, 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 Mike he didn't rip you off. He, he was influenced by. <laughs> no, okay. uh, well, I'm the yeah. one who first done it before everyone else, really. But, I was influenced to rip the video from YouTube and re-upload it on my channel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah, no, no. Not, it, yeah. Um, so, so you, you, you don't know, uh, you don't, you don't, you don't know, like James, James Rolfe, isn't it? Is his name? Yes. Sorry, now we're just asking if you know other YouTubers today. Is there? Oh, well, you know, I know a couple of them. But... Let's, let's talk about Ashens for a bit. <laughs> Have you had him on yet? Did you say? No, we, we didn't oh. attempt to. Uh, oh, we tried. Oh, no, I mean, he's pretty cool. He'll probably say yes. Well, I've had you, uh, we've had you on right, now. Trev, so. get on it. Get on okay, it. Yeah, yeah. Him, yeah. Him, no, no, he's, he's not one of those people who go, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, like, we'll, give we'll give him a go. We'll give him a go. So one, one that I'd, I'd, uh, I would like to ask you is uh, I sort of stumbled across a video of yours from a, a few years ago now where you had like a load of retro games. I think it was your entire collection, I think. It was like in a shed or something and it got yeah. flooded and it kind of ruined them all. Yeah. So what happened? Did you Have you got them all back or did you... I've got most of them back. Most of the sort of... Missing a couple of like the Japanese PC Engine games and stuff like that. I haven't gotten them. But yeah, most of them I got back. Yeah. Back well, why the hell were they outside in a shed? I was clearing up the house. Oh, really. right. Oh, that's really nice. unlucky. And uh, yeah, another thing was my dad thought it'd be a good idea to put a metal engine on top of my shed and it sort of bent all the thing <laughs> in all around it. Uh, oh, I lost loads of magazines and when I come to sort of open them up and that, they all literally turn to mud. So yeah. Weird. Magazines, I actually do like. Oh, I've still got a few knocking around from when I bought them back in the day. Mm. I do like digging them out every now and then to read them. So that must have been, well, the whole thing must have been pretty heartbreaking, I guess. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I lost everything. Well, it's basically more because I bought it as a kid, really. And sort of, it was yeah. So see, it was what more. Oh, I was all upset about it was those copies. I mean, it's all right to replace them, but yeah, they were the cool. copy you bought as a kid. Yeah, the emotional thing, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. So, have you got them all back now, or is there, is there any that are still like outsta- the, the outstanding? Uh, I'm still missing Street Fighter and a PC Engine Street Fighter Two. 
Oh, ah, right, stuff, cool. Stuff like that, yeah. So there's one or two I'm missing, really. Great version of Street Fighter 2, that. Yes. Actually. So that bizarre sort of slightly fat hue card. Yeah, pregnant hue card, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another good handle. Yeah. Did any of them work after the flooding incident? Did you sort of dry them out, or are they all completely... Well, uh, the Nintendo 64 cartridges are the ones that are most messed up. Uh, mm. they they got so bad that like all the metal was sort of bubbling on it, and some oh. of them even had verdigris on, on the pins. Oh, I'm, my God. I've rarely ever seen it. I've only ever seen it once before, having verdigris on a pins on a cartridge. So did, did, did anything survive at all? Like, uh, I think a couple... Ironically, a lot of the uh, Super Nintendo boxes I had in a box but all survived fine. Oh, really? Which is a bit weird, yeah. So, That's a result. Yeah, even though they're, in, they're inside a cardboard box, there's no protection of them. Yeah. But so yeah, they all survived. So stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah, no, I lost, I lost most of it. Well, well it most, most of the stuff, well, Mega Drive stuff was all right because they were in those plastic boxes yeah. and stuff. But yeah, they were more resilient. Yeah, nuclear war, anything's going to be left over of cockroaches and Mega Drive boxes. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, snares in particular. I mean, like we, we've talked about it before on the podcast, but obviously, there's a they they have actually gone through the roof now. Even the stupidly common games, like again, going back to CEX, I was in my local one in Woolwich, and the Super Mario World was in there. It was fifty bloody quid. It was in the mm. box, complete, but the box was like dog-eared and it looked like Margaret Thatcher's like oh, face <laughs> <laughs> with like Mario t- tattooed on it. So, uh, and that's just that, that. I mean, that's isn't that the biggest selling SNES game? So there's literally millions. Well, it came free oh. with the machine for all, like half its life, so everybody had it regardless, even if they didn't want it. You got it. Yeah, I mean, it's what I was. Stu, we were talking about this, weren't we, this week? That um, I've got recently got into sort of a hardcore Game Boy. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Game yeah, Boy. The porn section of Game Boy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got into it. Yeah. Um, it's really, yeah, I love it. Um, yeah. And it's kind of flown under the radar a little bit because I think it, I think it's, it might be the most popular Nintendo console before the Wii in so, the yeah. UK. Mm. In in the UK, obviously, you know, if you don't say UK, you might say, "Oh yeah, but that's obviously the NES, isn't it?" Or something. But no, I think in the UK it's probably the most. So um, the, the prices haven't really gone up. I mean, uh, a Mario game that's you know fifty quid boxed on a other Nintendo console is twenty mm. on a, the Game Boy. So I don't know if that's something that's potentially gonna you know get bigger as time goes by. So start hoarding those Game Boy games, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you don't want to say that on YouTube, do you? Because you'll drive the price No, up. I do that. I've already done that with Driver 3. Have you but really? The second, I, the second I put that video out, I went up a tenner on eBay. So. Is, is, really? is that for real? Yeah. Is that, seriously, that did happen? Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah. So that was quite annoying because people could write to me saying, I can't buy it now. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> for saying that, do you, go kill yourself. <laughs> a, few, a few weeks ago, we had uh, Kim Justice uh, oh, yeah. on, on the channel. And she did a video uh, a few days ago about all the Netty Rosie games. Mm. So, of course, I watched that, and there was one of them yeah. called Adventure Game. So I was straight on to, oh, that looks really good. Oh, I want to play that. And so I got that off uh, eBay, and that was almost £2.50. Mm. I imagine that will go up a little bit, and with all the exposure that it's now got. Mm. I was in that demo disc. Uh, I think it's the PlayStation Mag. I can't remember which issue it was. I mean, I've got it. Yeah, I've got the demo disc, yeah. Yeah, I think it was the same disc that had, like, Metal Gear Solid for the first level, I think, or the first oh, two really? levels. It was on the cover of... Yeah, I've got I've got that, and uh, I mainly played that Total Soccer. But sorry, that was an awesome game. <laughs> it's, like, the best game on, like, one of the best PlayStation football games. Um, but... I could imagine that disc on its own. Do you get those discs, Stu, in your shop? Just the discs? We do, but it's, I'll be honest with you, it's a little bit of a, a lack of knowledge on my part because they, they've come in, oh, God, demo discs. No, we don't take them, mate. No. Oh, that's, it's, it's, that's more a charity shop thing where the old discs. Yeah, we don't, oh, we don't take them. Put with the audio we, CDs, yeah. But then someone said to me, oh, no, no, the ones that have the Net Your Rosie games on, oh, they're, you know, you can sell them for a pound. So, okay. So the, all the ones that have Net Eurosy stuff on there, I, I I take that in, and you know there's just a big pile of them. And uh, Do people come uh, in and ask for them though, like I want all the Net Eurosy games. <laughs> uh, I think because they are they are proper games, and obviously made by, um, you know, home brewers or, or you know, 
bedroom coders or whatever you want yeah. to call them but they are sort of full games and, and it's the only way to get them because if you want to get mm. like, a, like play metal gear solid you know the first level you'll probably buy the game yeah so cheap now so no point. well it, 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 exactly you'll probably buy the game but if you want to play a adventure game or you know one of the many other games that came out for it the only way to get them is on those those discs because i don't you know maybe it may be um you know playstation should do a ps4 disc with literally every game on there and uh, see how that goes they should do well yeah. i think i think there was one game that became a retail commercial release that was that devil, dice, devil, devil dice. dice yeah um oh. but, but the others and actually you like the one i mentioned total soccer got a weird game boy port and there's also a PC version of it called Total Soccer 2000, funny enough. Kim didn't mention that in her video. I might have to tell her about that. Mm. <laughs> you don't know nothing in the about comments. games. Yeah. My, uh, my computer just an update on my computer. It just made a bing, like a, like a noise. Cheers, Stu. We'll make sure you keep us updated on the computer. Yeah, I'm you know, still... still no picture, yeah. There's currently Pray flames. flames. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> flames, yeah. Pray for Stu's computer. Hashtag pray for Stu's computer. Get that going, <laughs> guys. Larry, get that on your channel, mate. Yeah. Let's do it. Hashtag yeah. not all PCs. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think I think the best one is there's that one that like uh, like I said, that's got literally about twenty Rose games on it. I yeah, it like that's that. one with a picture of Jinx on the cover. Yeah, know. that's right. Yeah, yeah. And um, that I, famous I, platform game. That, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it was all right. I think. Demo games are good. I, th- I think they only appeal to like the super super <coughs> hardcore collectors, where like either the demo game is like significantly different to the final release, or mm. it's got a demo of a game that was never released. Yeah, I mean, it was on the one, in one of your videos, there isn't it? There was the Mega CD, the famous got kind of a Mega CD one, wasn't there? Like Kale. oh yeah, Keo Flying Squadron, yeah. where they forgot to take out the level select sheet, so everybody got, <laughs> they've the, got the whole. They've got to take out the whole game. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> from, from the demo. So what? What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. The, the the demo had the whole game on. Yeah, basically, it's got a wall on it that when you get to the first level, it resets the game. Yeah. Uh, so that's the only thing to block it. So if you, all you need to do is just do a level select, start from level two, and you've got the whole game there. Oh. Is like with the Se- Se- Sega Pro or, or Mega? Or Sega Pro, uh, Sega Pro CD. Yeah. That short so- magazine series. And it's like the size of a bloody leaflet. <laughs> um, no, no, yeah. leaflet for yeah. me, that goes to like 30 40 quid now on ebay that di- demo disc for that reason yeah i think the, the the actual game the official release is like sort of peanuts isn't it but like the no it's like 100 quid that's why it's so expensive oh really oh yeah everywhere you go you're in a ko flying squadron gold mine really it's like yeah you got like i guess oh. you've got like yeah you got there you go the demo that's worth 100. how much does that go for then then a couple hundred quid yeah but i suppose no. like yeah, like Snatch, I thought it was a big halo at the Super sure. what, what is the most expensive? But it's, it's probably Snatcher, isn't it? I, I, I think, think probably, yeah, Snatcher. Have you had that in the shop, Stu? Oh, I was going to say a joke then. About, um, about the... the but, <laughs> don't about go the there. Yeah. <laughs> the family-friendly podcast. Family, family-friendly. Uh, family no. Friendly. I'll tell you what. Once, I was in Streatham, near, near where oh, I live. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, was, I, I walked past a uh, Oxfam, and in the window they had every rare Mega CD game, including Snatcher and Mega CD Seriously? Two. Yeah, on, honestly, no joke. And literally, I, I think the guy in Oxfam they'd gone on eBay, and it was um, it was like ninety quid, a hundred pound for this, eighty pound for that. And I was like, oh my god, I can't believe it. This is. You know, they're all probably around the right price, but it's a it's an Oxfam shop. I should be paying two pounds for these, and yeah. you know, it's yeah, it's my right now. to pay two pounds for it yeah. and then sell it on for lots of money. It's they're that's more my right. They're more interested in a plastic bag it comes in. Oh, it's a nice bag. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I, I can't believe they, it. they didn't pay any money for it as well, which which is the real kind of oh, it's it's annoying. good that I'm sure they sold them all, and all the money went to charity to. You know, help out everyone all yeah. around the world and 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 blind things. orphans and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't, you know, I don't yeah, really mind the bad that. It's just like no, I want to buy them, but it's I can't buy them. Inflated retro game prices is helping famine. So Ex- exactly, exactly. Yeah. If anything, uh, so 
time is getting on, and we want to make sure uh, Larry's got to go. You got to go to bedtime. Yes, yeah, so I got, yeah, got my beddy by. Yeah, beddy by. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one final question though, and you're probably sick. Oh, of yeah. this well, one. you like bloody Columbo, you trove. One oh. more question. <laughs> my wife loves <laughs> it. Go, do, I get, yeah. do I start getting agitated and accuse you of harassing me? Yeah. <laughs> Just admit to the murder, Larry. Yeah. You're it's, okay. it's not going to be about what YouTubers you know. Yeah. So a, d- a different, a different tack. Um, so the Nintendo Switch. What, yes. Do you think it's going to be, be a success? No. No. Damn what? you, Larry. <laughs> because, because there's first of all, there's bugger all games out for the thing. And Absolutely. there never will be any decent games because it's, so, it's just about as power... Because uh, EA announced they're going to be porting FIFA to the game and it's actually a port of 360 version. I mean, yeah, that's how weak the machine is. Nintendo yeah. needs to get it through their head that if they want to survive in a console market, they need to release a system that is as powerful as their competition. I know yeah, they go on about, oh, oh, but if they don't, that's what their third party support wants. I mean, there's only yeah. that thing you have to dig bloody dust off of the thing every two years and that when they, Nintendo decided to bring out a new Star Fox or Metroid or whatever. And that's but aside reason. from that, just, yeah, just, apart from that, just stick it back yeah. on the shelf. And, that. I mean, and it's, the battery life isn't even good enough for it to be a proper handheld system as well. Yeah, I mean, so it's kind of, it's difficult, isn't it? Because if they if they market it as a handheld, which is kind of the way maybe to go, because it's a mega powerful handheld, mm. although not so much more than a, a decent tablet, um, then it's like cool, it's a mega powerful ha- handheld. But they've also got to market it as a as a thing you plug into your telly. Mm. And the trouble with that is it's annihilated by obviously when God when when Scorpio comes out, it's going to be a couple of gens behind in, in theory. Mm. Um, I mean, have, have you got one, Larry? Do you? Be oh quiet? yeah, yeah. I've, well, I've, play, I've played I've played and finished Zelda on it, and <laughs> that's it's now just sat there. Yeah, I lick, lick one of the cartridges, and that's about it, really. <laughs> that's a feat, oh, isn't got, it? Yeah, yeah. I've got Bomberman for it, but I've never even taken out the wrapper yet. You haven't done just, the one-two switch, or whatever it is, the fifty-pound mini game. No, you can't play it on your own, now, can you? It's just it's just, just that, bizarre because they knew how to market things in the nineties. With Rick Mail and the ads and all that. Well, yeah. I, th- I think they've done a good job with the Switch. I, I, it's I, better than what they've done before. Yeah, but, it's, it's, better than, it's better than what they've done before, and it's coming out with an absolutely cracking game. Um, but f- for me, it's just... Mm. Against, against who they're up against, it's not going to be good enough. You, you know, but then is the whole idea to, to me just it just needs a bloody Pokemon game, these Pokemon Sun and Moon two or something on yeah, there, and you can play not... that on the go, and then yeah. it would just be a roaring success. But they'll, I just don't know what they... about that. I don't know about roaring. Oh, oh, now oh. success is a hundred million units. That is like yeah, you're oh, well. I guess the obviously the X three sixty and the PS three were kind of around ninety. But that's because mm. you have like a weird three way split in that last gen, which hasn't happened before. Normally one runs away with it and the other two are sort of scrabble, scrabble around for, you know, mm-hmm. second and third place. Um, but yeah, and it, something needs to sell a hundred million units to be sort of a, a, a really good, healthy platform. And I can't see the switch do that. We, you don't, don't terrible. I, I mean, it's yeah, only yeah. sold 3 million more consoles than the Dreamcast. Yeah. Which, mm. and, and that did that in a couple of years, didn't it? Or three years. Yeah. The Dreamcast. So it's, it's horrendous. I mean, it's a good system. I like it. Uh, I, but, um, it, obviously, the marketing of people thought it was just an add-on for the Wii. You know, that kind of killed it in the end. Mm. Yeah. I'm saying that, the Wii U, I thought it was a cracking machine with loads of good games on it. Yeah. yeah. It was made by Nintendo. Pretty much. All of them yeah. made by Nintendo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the third party sport dried up literally within a year. It was insane, wasn't it? How quickly it, they all dropped it. I mean, I had a, I had a, I mean Xenoblade... That wasn't a Nintendo. Uh, really? <laughs> that, that, that was good. I'm scratch, scratching Watch the Dogs barrel the here. Last game? Watch Dogs was the last AAA sort of release yeah, for the Wii. Yeah, that was rubbish. Oh, no, it was uh, Breath of the World. Uh, yeah, I know, but in terms of like oh. the third party, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I think it was. Watch I think Dogs. Xenoblade came out after Durant, that. Durant, 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 was that say, who, who do that? Xenoblade. I don't know. It's a Japanese studio. Uh, that doesn't count then. So. Uh, <laughs> 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 Doesn't count. So, yeah, basically, Watch Dogs was the last AAA game, and it ran really badly yeah. uh, compared to the, even the PS3. So didn't even yeah. have Anne Robinson in it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's what we all bought that game for. Yeah. Right? Misleading advertising. I was expecting a video game interpretation of Watch Dogs. <laughs> Watch Dogs on BBC Two. BBC imagine, if, is... imagine phoning up Watch Dogs 
Hello, I've just brought watchdogs. I'm not <laughs> happy about it. <laughs> and because it was pl oh. plural, I thought there'd be two Anne Robinsons. Yes, yeah, exactly. Like Robinson. I'll wait for the Matt Allwright DLC pack. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my God, man. that would have been great. Okay, well, uh, I think we're going to we're going to come to the end of today's uh, show. Thank you so much, Larry, for yeah. appearing on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yes, we're, we should ask me again, and we'll do it properly next time. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll ask you. Even we'll find out some other YouTubers that you know. Yeah. We might even ask you a question uh, about <laughs> yourself, about <laughs> <How> novel. <laughs> Bizarre, um, you don't want to know about me. I'm just this folks, weird entity on the internet. Numpty on you. We're all numpties on, on, yeah. on, on YouTube. So, yeah. yeah. So, thank you so much, uh, thank Larry. Thank you so it's much, Larry. You on. Love to get you back on, hopefully, in the future. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you on again. And um, we'll be back again, hopefully, if not next week, the week after. We'll sport you a bit. I mean, two shows in, in a week. It's been YouTube overload. Um, uh, but yeah, we'll be back soon with another show in a couple of weeks and keep an eye out on YouTube. What, what can you subscribe to, Stu? Tell, tell the people. Right. Oh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes. You can subscribe to us on Stitcher. So if you search out the console shocks, console shock, and also on YouTube, and we have a Facebook page as well. And make sure you check out Larry's page. Larry, what's your page? Uh, it is youtube.com slash Larry. Oh wow! You got Larry. 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 Yes, I got a. It's the a only Larry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so pretty. His vanity good. project is over at uh, YouTube. Full yeah. slash Larry. Larry. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Check Larry out um, on the YouTubes. Mm. And yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Take care, Thank everyone. You. Please do not operate heavy machinery after watching this podcast. <laughs> 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 what a great sign off that was <laughs> <laughs> this is what we paid Larry for oh, <laughs> right cheers guys